Housing affordability has fallen to a 13-year low. Consumer confidence is at a 16-month low. And on top of all that, the Fed comes out and says a soft landing is going to be very challenging. And if that's not enough, economists at both Moody's and Redfin say that a housing correction is coming. So what does all this mean for the Raleigh housing market and Raleigh real estate prices? Hey, I'm Will Wofford, real estate broker with Berkshire Hathaway in Raleigh, North Carolina. And on today's video, I'll break down the most recent real estate data and I'll highlight and explain what it means for you if you're moving to Raleigh, North Carolina, or just want some local insights into the Raleigh market and where it's likely headed. And I wanna start off by telling you when a market is shifting, the data that they're putting out there in the headlines that you're reading, that doesn't actually job with what's really happening real time because most of the data you see is lagging data that confirms the current trend. So in today's video, I'll dive into these numbers and tell you about everything from home sales to price drops to housing inventory and days on market. So you can make an informed decision as a buyer or seller in the Raleigh housing market. Now, before we do all of this, I wanna take a minute and ask a favor. If you find any value in today's video, give it a thumbs up because it really helps the YouTube algorithm and enables it to share the video, which helps me accomplish my goal of trying to help educate buyers and sellers as they navigate this crazy Raleigh real estate market. So as I mentioned a second ago, we're gonna take a look at the most recent data, but I need to stress this data is from Redfin and I wanna make sure you understand the data that we're gonna be using and talking about is what's called lagging data because it's a couple of months old to some extent. Now this data came out in June, but it doesn't actually reflect what's happening in May and June because these properties went under contract sometime in March or April and they closed in May and June. So what I'm saying is the market was different. As many of you know back then, interest rates were lower and lots of buyers had their interest rates locked in. Inventory hadn't increased quite as much as where it sits today. And we still had a pretty good buyer demand out there. It was a crazy market during that time. So lots of those homes went under contract because it was a different market. So I'm just saying the numbers that we're gonna look at today are gonna be a little bit different than what's actually happening or what I'm feeling as a real estate agent, and I'll explain what all that means. So as you can see from this first chart, showing the median sales price, 447,000, and that's still showing a 20% increase year over year. Now for many of you that don't understand how this data works, year over year compares where prices are today versus a year ago. But I wanna make sure you understand that doesn't mean that prices are increasing by 10% from a month ago. It's from this time a year ago and the market was strong through the first quarter of 2022. But since then, things have changed dramatically as interest rates have gone up, housing inventory has grown and buyer demand has slowed and thus the housing market has changed or shifted a little bit, right? I mean, prices aren't increasing at breakneck pace anymore, but the headlines that come out show year over year gains. So I wanna make sure you understand as a buyer, you shouldn't really pay attention to what house prices are doing year over year because it doesn't accurately reflect what the market's doing. At the same time, we're seeing the number of houses sold decrease by 8.9% from a year ago. Now, I think this is probably a little more accurate reflection of what's happening in the housing market. There are fewer sales and closings because housing affordability is currently sitting at a 13-year low, which means less buyers can actually qualify to buy these properties not only because they've increased in price, but because we've seen interest rates rise so dramatically. So there's less people that can actually afford to purchase these properties. Therefore, there are less sales happening. But I will tell you, if you shop around, the rates are fluctuating in a fairly wide range. And in some instances, it might make sense to buy your rate down if you plan on owning the home for seven to 10 years or more. This chart shows that we actually seen the number of homes for sale decrease by just over 3%. Now I find that a little hard to believe because you know inventory has definitely picked up in most markets we're back to 2020 level so we've seen inventory actually go the other direction but this is showing the Raleigh metro area there are three percent less properties than there were a year ago now as I mentioned I don't know how accurate that really is 
But what I will tell you, as a buyer, there are definitely more properties on the market today. And for the sellers out there, you definitely have a little bit more competition now than you had a couple of months ago. The problem I have with this data in a market that's moving sideways, and in some cases declining a little bit with regards to activity and prices being stagnant and not really increasing, is when you have lagging data, it's kind of difficult to figure out what's actually happening in the market. But in an appreciating market where things are moving very, very quickly, it's a little bit easier to go back and look at what comparable homes did say 30, 60, or 90 days ago and identify the price trajectory the home is on. I just think in a declining market, it's a little bit more difficult. And it's not just that, you're in a time of market where the seasonality is starting to become a factor. Right now, for instance, it's summer and a lot of people are on vacation because the kids are out of school and fewer people are focused on buying and selling. It's true, we do have a lot of homes closing at this time period, but the homes that went under contract 30 to 60 days ago and are now homes that are closing in the summer. So the summer period we're in now is credited for the sales that happened one to two months ago. So the slowing that I'm starting to see right now when I'm out there selling real estate is what's happening at the moment, but we're not gonna see that data show up for a couple of months. So just understand when looking at some of this data, it's lagging and it's lagging in the sense of what's actually happening in the market. So when you're seeing some of these adjustments either up or down, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. One thing we do know for sure is homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer than they were at the beginning of the year. And this chart shows that homes are sitting on the market about 23 days, down about 11 days from where we were sitting at this time a year ago at 34 days on the market. So homes are definitely sitting on the market a little bit longer versus the market peak, but a lot less than a year ago. Why? Because again, there are less buyers out there that qualify for these homes, less buyers out there willing to make rash, quick decisions as they look for the ideal home, and there's still significant buyer competition out there. But for the most part, you no longer have to put an offer in as soon as it goes active in order to get the offer accepted. So buyers are taking a little bit longer to make decisions. And at the same time, many sellers have overpriced their homes to start with because they don't realize how quickly the market has changed or shifted. And therefore, they're in a different mindset. So it's taking a little bit longer for them to adjust accordingly to what the buyer feels like is the correct value for the property. So days on market are increasing. But like I said, many sellers are overpricing their homes and that's why you're seeing just under six percent of homes out there at the moment that have some sort of price drop now you might be listening to me and thinking that's just the beginning look at these huge declines in the market yeah that's one out of every four properties but understand this time last year about one percent of properties had some sort of price drop but in every market you're going to have people overpricing homes and homes that sit because they aren't priced correctly and in some cases they're grossly overpriced. In this market, it's gonna be a little bit more obvious because of the shift that's happening at the same time. But we are seeing homes start to pull back in pricing. You know, I've been talking to clients and potential sellers about pricing property and tell them you almost have to go back to where values were sometime in February and March versus pricing your home now based off something that, that sold in May or June. Because if you look at the June price, that property likely went into escrow sometime back in April or May. And ever since March, rates have increased, you know, so there's more inventory on the market and less buyer demand out there. So that property that closed in June is not really an accurate reflection of the current value, even though it closed in June, because the market has slowed further since that property first went under contract. So you might have to go back a couple of months to look at where values were then, but unfortunately many sellers don't wanna do that because sellers want to capture the most upside and they're looking to lock in sales price for their home. In many cases, sellers will say, my home is nicer, it's better, it's in a better location than my neighbor's home and I'm not gonna sell my house for less than they sold theirs just down the street and therefore they price it above their neighbor's home. And in some cases it sells quickly because it's a nice property in a good location. But in other cases, it just sits, which causes days on market to build. And that seller ends up reducing the price. And that's why you're starting to see more price drops out there. Now, one thing we do know 
is there's more supply. We're currently sitting around two months of supply in the Raleigh metro area, and about 25% of that inventory is new construction. While at the beginning of the year, we were sitting at just over a month's supply of homes. So what does all this mean? It still means we have low inventory compared to buyer demand, and that means if no more homes come on the market today in Raleigh, North Carolina, in just under two months, based on current buying patterns, those homes would all be gone. Now, we know that's not actually going to happen because some of those homes are still going to be on the market after two months. But the reality is we're far from a balance in the market, which means if a seller prices their home correctly, it's still likely to sell and it's just not going to sit on the market unless it's overpriced, it's in a bad location, or it's got other things going on with it. But as we move through the end of the year, which we'll talk about here in just a sec, I think we'll likely continue to see our housing inventory build. Now I want to point out that a balanced market, they say, is between five to seven months of inventory, and I don't think that's going to happen in 2022. That might happen sometime in 2023 or 2024, but it really all depends on the Fed and what they can do to control inflation. At the moment, as I mentioned, a lot of sellers are pricing at yesterday's prices, but the pricing issues will work its way through the market fairly quickly. But for the moment, the market is tilted in favor of buyers and gives them some room to negotiate. You're going to be able to get some properties for less than the asking price, but you need to understand that doesn't mean the housing market's falling apart. Because keep in mind, we just came off two years of rapid appreciation based on super low interest rates, super low housing inventory, and a lot of the demand came from people that probably would have bought later this year or maybe in 2023 or 2024 that decided to move their plans forward because they wanted to take advantage of low interest rates, enabling them to lock in on a low housing payment. And I want to remind you that people live off the mortgage payment, not the price of the home, which is why we saw a lot of demand pulled forward during this time period. But with all that said, homes that are priced correctly are still selling. As you can see from this chart, 80% of the homes are still selling above list or asking price. Now, I'll remind you again that the data is a couple of months old, right? These homes were likely under contract sometime in March or April to be closed in May or June and the market's changed since then. So the number of homes selling above the asking price is actually going to continue to decline. And the number of homes selling is going to continue to decline as well as we see the market stabilize a little bit. But we still have high inflation ratings. We still have the Fed making adjustments with regards to the Fed funds rate. And we still have more inventory coming to market. And we're in that time of the year where things are slow. Like I mentioned, the seasonality because kids are out of school, people are taking vacations. So it's going to be a slower time in the market. And that's likely going to continue, I think, throughout the rest of the year. So I think we've likely seen the peak with regards to buyer demand. We're still going to see more homes come to market, I think. But we've already seen the largest increase for the year that we're going to see. That was marked with closed sales that occurred in spring and the early summer period that we're likely in right now. But I do think more inventory is going to continue to come at this point, And that's going to continue to come in slower doses, which is going to give buyers more options to choose from. But as you know, Raleigh was one of the hottest housing markets prior to the pandemic. And our housing market was crazy prior to the pandemic. And and because this is one of the more affordable markets in the country, and there's a lot of tech jobs, medical jobs, and big universities in the area to prop up our local economy, I think our local market will remain pretty hot. So we currently have 4,130 homes active in the Raleigh metro area, which is a considerable increase from when we started the year with just over 3,000 homes. But at the same time, for those of you out there comparing this to 2007 or 8, we actually have about 80% less homes on the market than we did during that time where there were around 18,000 homes on the market in the Raleigh area. So significantly less inventory than we had in 07 and about 50% less inventory than we had between 2017 and 19 leading up to the pandemic and that averages around 8,000 homes. So our inventory today is about 50% less than it was during that time period prior to the pandemic. And our housing market was competitive, right? It was not a buyer's market, it was a seller's market. And it just wasn't as strong as the one that we've just seen over the last couple of years. And something I like to remind people of is that people seem to have short memories and they tend to only remember what's happened over the last couple of years. They don't wanna look back prior to that. And so as the market isn't reacting the same way it did over the last couple of years, 
Everybody thinks, well, the world's falling apart and values have to crash. No, we still have about 50% less properties than we had back then, and there's still buyer demand out there. With that being said, we've seen the number of days on market decrease, and we're sitting at 23 days on market right now for the Raleigh metro area in the suburbs, which is still a really strong seller's market. But as we continue to move through the summer and more supply comes to the market, seasonality issues will come into play. So you're going to see days on market increase and it's going to increase to the point where it becomes a little bit more balanced in the market. It's still going to be considered a seller's market, but buyers are going to have more options in how they approach offers and how they write offers. Sellers are going to be more willing to work with you. You're going to be able to ask for things and actually get them, right? Sellers are going to have to negotiate and this is going to be a really good thing for buyers. With all this said, just understand the market is continuing to shift and it's continuing to change, but that still does not mean as a buyer, you're gonna be able to go in and get a huge discount on a property. It's not that kind of market. It's not gonna be that market. Prices are gonna to continue to move sideways. In some markets, they're actually gonna move down. And the properties that are gonna be affected the most are the ones that have location issues. You know, something that we've seen over the last couple of years with the pandemic is that any house on the market was selling and selling at a premium. You know, the house that backs up to the freeway or the house that was inferior or in disrepair, you know, they both sold at the same price because there was no inventory out there. Well, the homes that had the location issues that aren't nice on the inside that are still trying to get that premium price, those are the homes that are gonna be affected the most. The nice homes, the ones in the great school districts, the ones that are beautifully landscaped and everything works as it should with no major repair issues, those homes are going to continue to sell for a premium. You know, just because the market's shifting, it doesn't necessarily mean every house has to adjust to that. It's really the ones that over the last couple of years shouldn't have gotten those premium prices, those are the ones that are gonna to continue to be affected the most. So as a buyer out there, just understand, and if you're a seller, make sure you're looking at fair market value and really taking into account the things that were talked about in this video. Now, if you're moving to the Raleigh area, I'd love to be a real estate resource or choice. So feel free to reach out and discuss. And if you want to dive a little deeper into the Raleigh market and you're still watching, check this video out where I dig a little deeper into the fundamentals of the Raleigh market. And I'll see you on the next video.